Hi, this is Mark Pritchard with the WebLogic Server PM team and I'd like to give you a short demonstration of the Smart Upgrade utility which we've developed to help customers um, migrate their applications from OC4j to WebLogic Server. Now, you can download this um, from OTN. I'm looking at the latest version which is 1.2, so here we have Smart Upgrade R1.2, that's what you'll get when you download it. Um, if you unzip that, you'll see there are actually two zip files contained within that. This is for running Smart Upgrade standalone from the command line. I'll show you that in a minute. This is for installing into the JDeveloper environment, uh, and that's what I'm going to show you next. So if you do that unzip, what you do is if you were installing it, you would go to um, check for updates, and then instead of doing all this with the update centers, you can simply go to install from local file, and what you would do is you would um, browse to the jdeveloper underscore smart upgrade dot zip. So this is inside the, the zip that you got from OTN. You simply pick that, you can go next, and you'll see here WebLogic Smart Upgrade version 11.113. And you would click finish and carry on to install. I've already done that, so I'll just close that down now. Um, couple of points to notice. When you've done that, you might think, well, you can just click on new application. Unfortunately, the smart upgrade doesn't show up here, but what you can do is to start a new application here by going File New, and you pick Applications, and you can pick a Java EE upgrade application there. So let's create one of those. I'm just going to call this Smart Upgrade, and we'll put this in the normal place. And we'll have a project. Now, there are two things you can do with this tool. One is you can analyze um, a deployable archive, an EAR file, WAR file, and so on. Or you can actually analyze the server configuration itself. So this is to test if there are any um, things in the environment that need to be recreated. Do you need, for example, to um, create new data sources, things like that, in WebLogic Server? We'll see that later. But in fact, what we'll do first is take a a web services example and these will all be posted with the recording on retriever so I'll just go to my little project folder down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one loan service here and um, I'm going to choose to generate artifacts now you have a, uh, a choice here you could simply just generate an upgrade report which is extremely valuable in its own right because it will actually go through and give you uh, detailed recommendations about all the points where the uh, application may use OC4J specific features or where things might need to be uh, recoded for WebLogic Server with recommendations and documentation and so on on how to do that. But in many cases we can go ahead and actually fully or, or partially generate artifacts that will actually do that for you. Um, and we take advantage of some sort of glue code capability that we have from the uh, Java required files, the JRF portability layer. And we'll, we'll choose to do that here because for um, this web service application we can actually do a complete automated um, a generation and, and, and port this to WebLogic Server. Now there are a number of different um, options here, flags that you can set around how you want this uh, generation to be done and you can have a look at the sort of details these are all all described down here the one I'm interested in here for now is, is generate the instrumented code for performance analysis this is something you would obviously use for sort of development and testing I want to see if there's a significant overhead in including the, this this uh, automatically generated glue code to do the mapping between OC4J and WebLogic Server uh, and then if I'm happy with that analysis I can regenerate with this flag turned off uh, to remove that layer. But let's go ahead and do that and we'll just go through now and this will actually go through all the uh, deployment descriptors, it'll actually analyze the, the application code and it will tell me any changes that need to be made or it may recommend um, some things that might want to be reconfigured about the the application but it will go ahead and if possible it's going to generate the artifact so that we can migrate this directly to WebLogic Server and you can actually see what happens in the window in the background you can see the smart upgrade output there
There we go, so that's finished. Let's click there and we can see the project with all the, uh, the code, the generated artifacts and so on that you can then look at in detail. But the first thing I want to do is to look at the upgrade report here. And you can actually see that in this case we've, we've done very well. There's really uh, very little that we need to do here. So we can go straight ahead and, and do a deployment. What I'm going to do uh, for this demo is I'm actually going to use the um, integrated WebLogic server uh, within JDeveloper. Now I actually uh, regenerated this. What I did was I went into the, the, the integrated server by default launches in this um, directory. This is your sort of home directory on Windows and there's a application data which, which might be hidden in, in, in Internet in Explorer. But I went in and I, I removed that system directory and then I regenerated the integrated server. That's simply because I like to use the sort of normal WebLogic sample port of, of 7001 and I like to use WebLogic Welcome 1. But you can use the integrated uh, WebLogic server that's already configured within JDeveloper if that's what you prefer. Or of course you can connect to uh, your own external WebLogic server in just the normal way. Don't forget, if you're going to be deploying, you're going to need uh, the JRF configured in your domain. So since we got this up and running, there we go. So now you can see, for example, this domain, I do have all the JRF libraries loaded and so on. And there's my default server. So what I can do is I'm actually going to launch the admin console. I find it easier to do the deployment through the uh, WebLogic Server Admin Console, and I'll show you why in a second. <clears throat> 